What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So today's video is going to be all about fungicides and actually I'm going to be putting down an application of granular fungicide here to my St. Augustine lawn. But this video is going to apply to all of you no matter where you live because all the fungicides that we talk about can be used on any grass type. The other thing is we're all coming into the same period of time of year where that disease triangle can really be connected especially like here I've had rain for the last five days and overcast. I've got a heavy nitrogen pushed lawn but more importantly than that the humidity today is skyrocketing. I mean, it's early morning here and it is literally like an oven. It feels like it's closing in. Of course, I was born and raised here, so I love it. But for sure, when you have lots and lots of rain and then all of a sudden you get this heavy, humid pull, and a lot of you are getting that, even up north, that is the perfect chance for disease to take hold. You guys up north, I'm mainly gonna be talking about dollar spot coming in right now, some brown patch. There may even be a little red thread still out there from the spring, but really we're mostly hitting you guys with your cool season turf, talking about that brown patch and dollar spot. For St. Augustine, we also have a lot of issues, but for me, it's gray leaf spot right now. Now I don't have it too bad, and that's why this is a great time, because one of the things about a fungicide is it works better if you can get it down before the disease manifests itself. So I'm not in the perfect window here, but I'm not bad, because I've only got a couple little spots that I'm noticing, but I am gonna go ahead and get something down just to keep it from getting any worse. Now, before we go getting too crazy, I do want to say, what was I going to say? Now, before we go getting too crazy, I just want to say, if you click in the link in the description below and you sign up for my newsletter, I know I'm always pushing my newsletter, but they're good tips, I will send you a free fungicide guide. I give you four different fungicides that you can choose from. Some are similar in active ingredient. There's one that's a little bit different that I'm going to show you here in a minute, but there's also liquid options as well as granular. It's a good guide to just kind of get you started to understand some inexpensive type fungicides that you could look for, that you could get, that you could use in your lawn. A lot of this content, because as you may or may not know, I'm not a super expert on fungicides. A lot of this content was brought to us by Matt Martin from The Grass Factor. I'm going to go ahead and link his channel in the description below. He's one of the smartest chemists on YouTube, and he is my go-to when it comes to technical advice, so I got a lot of good information for him on this as well. By the way, a lot of you ask me what these things are that I wear. These are called buffs. And I wear these because they keep my neck cool. They keep the sweat off of you and everything. But it is also sun protection for sure. These are really made for fishermen. But what I do is, is I can put that up when I'm mowing and it definitely keeps the sun off me because I'm pretty conscious about those things. Of course, don't tell anyone. The other thing that I'm really conscious about is I got these neck jowls kind of starting to come in the older I get. So I wear these to cover it up because I can't stand editing like for six hours looking at my own neck jowls. I don't know how you guys put up with it. All right, let me see if I can just make this easy for you real quick. So in the, in the video, you're gonna see that I've got everything journaled out here. A Couple different fungicides here, but we're mostly gonna talk about Eagle here and then another one called Heritage. But when we do that, we need to just group some things here. So you have group 11 fungicides and you have group three fungicides. The difference is, is just the mode of action, the way that they work on the fungus, okay? The reason that we wanna use two different ones is because there are some resistance issues. If you currently hammer your lawn all the time with a group free three fungicide over the years, the fungus in your lawn can become resistant to that. Same thing though, if you hammered it with a group 11 all the time, the same thing. But if you use both and you use them in rotation or concurrently, it's gonna, it's gonna keep it so that the fungus has less of a chance to really mutate to get around because it has to break through two modes of action in order to do that. So that's one thing. So when I talk about what I'm doing today in my lawn, I'm actually bulletproofing my lawn. And the reason I'm bulletproofing it is because I, I'm going to apply one of each. I'm going to apply a group 11 heritage and a group three eagle. This one is in granular, this one is in liquid. That's just how it ended up for me. All the products come from domyown.com. Now let's talk about some advantages or disadvantages of each. The first is group three. Um, I'm using Eagle today. I will also give you another um, option here, propiconazole, which is what I used to call Banner Max, which is my all time favorite fungicide actually. Um, even though Eagle does have a great place in my heart because of what it can do for apple scab and crab apples, but that's for another day. Uh, either way, group threes are cheaper. They don't have a very long residual. We're talking maybe 10 day residual here. Um, but again, a different mode of action. Group 11's more expensive, quite a bit more, but 30 day residual, and again, different mode of action. So you can see if we're using both in tandem here that we're gonna get longer residual on that mode of action, but it costs a little more, but we're gonna get a shorter residual, but a different mode of action and it's cheaper. So what you're looking at doing is, we're doing these two today, then if you needed a follow up in 30 days or so, you could hit it again with the cheaper group three. 
that should pretty much put you guys good for the entire year, hopefully. So here's how this works. We're gonna get the broadest spectrum of control that we can, and we're gonna minimize the chance for resistance. We're gonna hit it with a class 11 that has a 30 day residual here. That's the heritage. And then we're gonna follow up directly on top, same exact day, we're gonna hit with the class three here, and that's Eagle. It's only got eh, seven to 14 day, 10 day uh, residual. But again, it's a different class of fungicide. So now we have the broadest spectrum of control that we can. And I'm only really looking to get through this little 30 day period here anyway, until our normal weather patterns resume. Our normal weather patterns here are typically going to be rain every afternoon, but then all day long, it's super hot and dry. So what that does is it allows the St. Aug to be fine. It gets plenty of irrigation, but it also dries out real nice. So you're not really kind of encouraging that disease triangle. But as I mentioned to you here, the last few days, we've had tons of humidity rushing in and like five straight days of rain. That's why I'm gonna go ahead and bulletproof myself against disease just to get me through these next few weeks until I get into my normal pattern. And that's how I want you to look at it too. Now I do wanna say, if you're somebody that has had brown patch problems in the past, you've had problems with disease like that, then you probably should go with this bulletproof type strategy as well. But if dollar spot's just something that you're concerned, you should just pick up some propiconazole or some Eagle and just spot spray in areas where it comes in and you'll be just fine. If you are looking to do a preventative just because you haven't had problems in the past, but just cause you're like, man, I just wanna do that. I just wanna throw something down, which I don't necessarily recommend this be what you get your thrower down itch scratched by. But if it was, then go ahead and just get one of these fungicides, whichever one looks more affordable to you and put it down now and maybe again in a few weeks just as a preventative measure all of these are going to work for you and all of them are going to be fine it may just come down to the fact of do you prefer a liquid or a granular and what's easier for you all right well i feel like i need to clarify that ramble so let's do that so basically i'm gonna I, i'm giving you like three plans of attack the plan of attack that i'm doing is the bulletproof attack right i know i've got gray leaf spot present um so i want to go ahead and just bulletproof myself so i'm using both together in tandem i'm going to hit it with the group 11 today as well as the eagle today then i can follow up with the eagle in a few weeks if i need to and then that should be good that should carry me through until i get back to normal weather that's the whole reason we're doing this now is my weather pattern is jet. The second strategy is for those of you who have not had a problem before, but you're concerned just because you've had a really strange weather pattern, then what you can do is probably just come over here to the group three, grab some Eagle, put it down now, or some propiconazole, wait, you know, two weeks, put it down again, and that should be good. That'll carry you through, you know, three to four weeks, five weeks or so, just until your weather pattern levels off. You could also do that with the group 11. You could just get that, put it down one time, good just for those of you that are a little bit concerned. Then the third is for those of you that maybe you're noticing a little bit of dollar spot, which is not a serious problem, it's, ser it's really not. Just go for the group three. If you haven't been hammering your lawn with group threes, get some Eagle and just spot spray in the areas where you see it and a little bit outside. Just do that, you know, every couple of weeks, follow the label until the problem clears up. So that's more of like just an easy corrective for something simple like dollar spot. So let's check out our handy dandy label. I recommend you guys read the label on every product that you ever get. Look at this. Notes. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, by the way, quick reminder. Can't believe I almost forgot this. Uh, Memorial Day is coming up, May 28th. You guys know that's our big day for Milo application, so make sure you guys stock up. You want to be able to enjoy that fun on May 28th, I'm telling you. All the cool kids in the neighborhood are going to be throwing down Milo that day. You don't want to be left out. You can see the, the rate here for the most part is between two and four pounds per thousand. Um, you can see that, right? They're almost all two to four pounds. So here we go. This is what I've got, gray leaf spot. So two to four pounds, and it tells you here, begin applications before disease is present, continue applications while conditions are favorable for disease. So remember, I've got a 28-day residual. I have a little bit present now, but not much. So what I'm gonna do, just to be safe here, is I'm gonna stick at a three pounds per thousand rate there, and that only makes sense because I have 10,000 square feet and this is a 30 pound bag, can you see that, where is it? Well, it's upside down, but this is a 30 pound bag, right? So if I'm doing three pounds per thousand, then that means I can cover my complete 10,000 square feet. And so that's where, you know, sometimes it's just smart to be logical, right? I mean, why would I do a four pound rate when I can't cover the whole lawn with that? So I'll do the three pound rate, which is safe because I'm not gonna over apply then, and I can still hope for the best. And again, I'm kind of going with my extra, you know, kind of ace in the hole here anyway. So I've got the double coverage, so no need to overdo it with this. We'll stick with a mid rate. Now for the Eagle, again, we're gonna mix this in a pump sprayer. There you go, see, group three. There's always a large patch. Anthracnose, yeesh. Copper spot, zonate leaf spot. I don't know about that. There it is, gray leaf spot, okay. 
So gray leaf spot, 1.2 ounces per thousand. Application day, 14 days. I'm gonna probably stretch it a little bit further. Uh, again, based on what I see, I mean, I'm gonna monitor the lawn, but if I notice I don't need another app, I'll wait three or even four weeks, but you can see there. So apply when conditions are favorable, no problem. And we do have a yearly maximum here. Do not apply more than 13.8 fluid ounces per thousand per year, but at a 1.2 rate, I'm not gonna have a problem with that. At least I hope I don't. Anyway, before we go getting too crazy on that, I'm gonna go out and enjoy my mow. You can see it is super hot here already. I'm sweating in the garage here. Beautiful day to mow. I'm gonna go out and do that, enjoy some humidity, understand what my grass is going through. That's the other thing. When you mow in the heat of the day, you truly understand what your turf is going through. And I think that's important. And I think your turf knows that and I think it loves you back for it. Speaking of the lawn striper, I don't know if you guys know, but I did a collab with Ryan Knorr, and then unexpectedly, Connor Ward also showed up on the scene. Really cool video on Ryan's channel. I'm gonna link in the description below. Oh man, I need some work on my stripes. <laughs> they are crooked, dying. I think I was distracted by FedEx and something else, which I'll show you over here in a second, but let's see what we got here, because I think I'm gonna need it. Yes, yes, this is what we need. Here, there we go. Yep, sirs. Let me show you why. Hey, I'm trying to film a YouTube channel here. And besides the broadleaf weeds that have come in, hold on, look at this. There's like a few of these. See that spot right there? One, two, there was another one. I'm like, what is this? It's just weird. I have not sprayed anything over here. I mean, that's weird looking. I mean, is it disease? Look at this. You guys will have to tell me. Maybe it is a root disease. Good thing we're doing uh, some treatments today, huh? <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe it was gonna be insects, but some sorta, but I don't think so. I think this is, either disease related or somebody threw something in here but I don't I doubt that all right now listen for uh, you beginners out there let me explain something to you see how these you can't really see the stripes here you got to make sure that the Sun is to your back right now the Sun is kind of right overhead but just watch if the Sun is to your back that's when you'll see the stripes watch this ready see how the stripes just magically appear it's because I changed the position of the sun and relative to the camera. So always remember that. So there you go. The domination is pretty strong, I would say. I am out of practice with the stripes, so I'm going to have to go back and fix these. <laughs> and I haven't edged yet or anything. I'm getting premature, but it looks pretty. I mean, I really like the way this looks. The thing is, the way this lot is, you can almost never see the stripes looking out there and looking in. That's why I don't stripe very often, you guys ask, because the sun is always around this way. Those over there, they didn't come out right with the sidewalk, but who cares? These are in a different angle. Again, I'm just messing around, and uh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. And then I've just spotted something that's going to cause us to uh, have to make our next video next weekend, and that's this fella, Ruski. What's up, brother? You are not my brother. That is some sort of a, you know, Japanese beetle, June bug, mass chafer, beetle, whatever. What they do is they lay eggs and they create grub worms. So what we've got, we're going to do section right, let's see. Let's do this section here, section three. We'll do that one here today, which is out front there. And section three is 2,500 square feet. So that makes it... All right, so here's the quick math down and dirty. And of course, this does relate back to the fungicide guide. So if you don't have the guide, you may not have all the information. For heritage, our rate is three pounds per thousand. For purposes of this video, we're doing this 2,500 square foot area. Of course, I did do my entire lawn later on. So what you need to do is reduce your fraction. 2,500 reduces down to 2.5 because we're looking at 1,000 square foot areas. 2.5 times three pounds per thousand means I need 7.5 pounds of product to cover this 2,500 square foot area. 
With Eagle, my rate is 1.2 ounces per gallon, and one gallon covers 1,000 square feet. Remember, we're working with a liquid here. So that means that 2.5, remember, same 2,500 square foot area, 2.5 times the 1.2 means I need three ounces to cover this area of the lawn. And I'm gonna put that in 2.5 gallons and spray that out evenly over that area. There you go, see? It's a beautiful color. It's like a nice, multi-brown color. But these are super light pellets, really light. They're not the wafy stuff, like if you get the Home Depot fungicides, those are like wafy, kinda, I don't know. I don't know, wafy is the only word I can think of. But anyway, this is not like that. These are better pearls for sure, much prettier. By the way, no trim pass here. We're just going to get her down as good as we can, throwing across the edges. I'm going to blow any excess back into the lawn anyway, but no trim pass here. Just get her down and get it on. By the way, you've seen this sprayer. This is a really good quality sprayer too. Pete sells these. I'll link in the description below. If you want to get one from him, He's got those. Those are very high quality too. I just prefer this four gallon backpack here from Chapin because the battery that fits it, I've got a trimmer that works for it too. Man, I gotta clean up around here. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. All good there. Pete sells them, I'll link for them. So this is really easy. We're gonna need 2.5 gallons of water, but you're gonna start with about one gallon. And then the first thing you're gonna add in is your three ounces of Eagle and then get it agitated. I just use the pressure from the hose to agitate everything. In case you're wondering, you don't need a surfactant for this. Put that out of your head. The other thing, I always triple rinse this, but because this is a fungicide, I'm not worried about mixing this into the same sprayer or even using the same fill station that I do with my next products. It's not gonna be an issue. I wouldn't do this with weed control though, but I will with the fungicide, because triple rinse will be just fine. Next, I'm gonna add in some RGS at three ounces per gallon. My philosophy here is if we're gonna blanket spray the lawn, we might as well get some RGS down at the same time to help kind of encourage some root growth because even though this fungicide is labeled to not harm the lawn, it's still not gonna be good for it. So giving a little bit of RGS in there is just like giving it a little boost. You could also mix in some bifin here or other things that you might be wanting to kill some mosquitoes with or other nuisance pests, as well as if you did need to do a blanket spray of weed control, some weed controls could also be mixed in here as well. But for me, just the RGS and the fungicide today.